hi and welcome to the lion's den. This is Mrs. Savage Lionheart playing. We're playing Nancy Drew. Welcome to my latest case, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. To start, choose junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on tutorial. As always, your mission is to solve the mystery. You're going to step into my shoes and be my eyes and ears. It will be up to you to decide my every move. Click on next to continue. When you're in the center of a room, you can turn around in a circle to see the whole room. We'll use this room as an example. Move your cursor to the left or right edge of the screen and you'll automatically move in that direction. You can turn off this auto move feature in the game setup menu. A forward arrow allows you to advance in the direction you want to go. Likewise, a back arrow allows you to take a step back. Sometimes up and down arrows are available too. Give it a try. Find the forward arrow and check out my suitcase. I always carry my magnifying glass with me to scan for clues. When it turns red, I know I'm on to something. Move your mouse until the magnifying glass turns red, then click to zoom in. When you want to go back to where you came from or turn around, find where your cursor turns into an arrow at the bottom of the screen and click. Try it. When the magnifying glass turns into a question mark, you can talk to someone. When it becomes a hand, you can use it to open and close things, pick up objects, and move things around. Now turn to the right, step over to the table beside the bed, and roll your cursor. See how the magnifying glass turned into a hand when you rolled it over the key? That means you can pick the key up. Click on it and see what happens. Good work! You're a natural. You just picked up the key and added it to your toolbox. To see what's in your toolbox, just click on the tool icon at the bottom of the screen, which will light up whenever you've added something new. If the All tab is active, you'll see all the objects you've collected during the game. Now click on the tab with the eye on it. When the Eye tab is active, you'll see only those objects which you might want to look at over and over again, like letters or messages. Now click on the Hand tab. When the hand tab is active, you'll see the objects that you can use to manipulate other objects. Find the key in your toolbox and click on it. See how the cursor turned into the item you clicked on? Use the key to click on the lock on my suitcase and you'll see how good I've gotten it. To return an object to your toolbox, just click on the tool icon, then click on the open toolbox, and the object will go back into storage. You can close the toolbox by clicking on the square in the upper right hand corner. And if you need to call someone, all you have to do is click on the cell phone at the bottom of the screen. Try it! You can use this phone to dial a number yourself, or you can automatically dial any of the numbers stored in the directory. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. It's Nancy. Just calling to say hi. You don't need to call me back. Bye. You can use this phone to dial a number yourself, or you can automatically dial any of the numbers stored in the directory. You can also take pictures with your cell phone. Just click on the cam button, aim the viewfinder at whatever you want to take a picture of, and click. To view the pictures you've taken, click on Menu. Then click on View Pictures. To scroll through your pictures, use the scroll buttons at the top of the screen. To send a picture to someone, scroll to the picture you'd like to send, then click on the Send button, click on a name from your directory, then click the Send button again.
The notepad at the bottom of the screen is where I keep reminders to myself. Click on it and you'll see what I mean. If the book tab is active, you'll see my journal, which is where I keep all my observations concerning information I've gathered and people I've met. If you click on the clipboard with a check mark, you'll see a list of what I need to do. Organized person that I am, once I've done something, I check it off. I'm done with that. Is that everything? Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important detective skills. You know, questioning suspects. In the game, you can talk to the people you meet. The conversation will appear in the text box below the scene. The words of the person you're talking to will be in blue, and my replies will be in white. Select a question or a reply by clicking on it, and listen to what your suspect says next. Give it a try! Excuse me, miss, but I couldn't help but notice that you're doing an awful lot of snooping around. Who, me? Oh no, I wasn't snooping. I was just looking for a dictionary. I keep forgetting how to spell perpetrator. If there are a lot of words in the text box, you know how some people can talk. Use the scroll box on the left to move the text up and down so that you can read along. Hang in there, we're almost done. If you make a major mistake, say you fall off a roof or blow something up, you can select second chance from the main menu to get back to where you were before you goofed. That's it, you're ready to tackle the case. I'll return you to the player challenge screen. When you're ready to start, remember, junior detective is not quite as tough as the senior level, so you might want to start there. You never know what you'll turn up in the game, so be sure to explore. Don't forget to trust your instincts and have fun. Good luck. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy boys. I just hope this doesn't turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West? You are just awesome! And Tino Balducci, only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives. My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective their friend, Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because, see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? Hey, what's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. 
What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Laurie Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. experience like that is just some kind of publicity stunt or how would you know? How well do you know her? I don't really know her, I just know of her. The only reason I accepted her invitation was because I've come across the name Jake Hurley several times in my research, and this seemed like a good opportunity to learn more about him. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You remember me? No. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Psst. Nancy! Come here! Uh, excuse me for a second. Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Did you talk to him? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you see what it was? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American teens against crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? I kind of agree with you. You've got to be kidding. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. Bess? George, get over here. It's Nancy. 
It's about time you called. What's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's been begging me to call you ever since she got here. Only because you've been driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Lori Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I could care less what Lori Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, man? Our hostess has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no Lori. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. I'm not so sure. Oh, come on, you don't really think something's happened to her, do you? Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Like anybody believes that. Sounds to me like somebody has been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Before she disappeared, Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died. And he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? Not yet, but the train is also rumored to be haunted by his dead wife. Hmm. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? Bess, do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. Lori Gerard finds it a little unnerving, too. I don't blame her. Bess, for the 972nd time, there's no such thing as ghosts. I know that. I just have a small problem believing that. If I told you that I needed a hint, what would you say? I'd say it's about time. I'd say fire away. How do you think I should go about finding Lori? If you take a look at what's hanging on the wall in Camille's car, you'll have this all sewn up in no time. But I'd scale back your expectations until you take a good look around Jake's old car, too. Excellent. You guys are great. We know. See ya! Finish that.
It looks like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. Sadie Crawford. like some kind of gemstone. Left pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? This must have been the sleeping car. I could not get 
terrible time I gave up and quit. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <laughs> uh, guessing could take me a while. Hey, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your TV show. Then I don't have to explain what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions and local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. That's very interesting. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing. And I, for one, am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. What do you think of Tino Balducci? I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. Is Lori a friend of yours? First time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course. Like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she planned it that way. You mean so we'd concentrate all our efforts on finding Jake Hurley? Possible, although she really doesn't strike me as being the planning type. Thanks for the chat. Take care. This looks like some sort of game. Hmm. Nothing happens. I'll bet I have to wind it up first. Oops. Oops. Darn. One more time. Wipe out. Try again later. Mm. 
Don't do that, please! Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. If I had some music, I could play a tune. It's locked. Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano. Thomasina O'Neill. Looks like some kind of sewing sampler. I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. I wonder what's under here, and what the deal is with those weird looking bolts. I need something that will turn the bolts. Check. Hey, Nancy, right? That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur detective, huh? Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? I don't know. Do you like what you do? I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Tell me about them. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. 
Where do you think it came from? Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. The Tino Balducci. Oh, thank you. What else can I do for you? So, what do you think happened to Lori? Well, she could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. Well, when do you think that will be? I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. You've been a big help. Anything for a fellow detective. Wonder what Jake used this for? Another gemstone. Looks like an old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. And what does AG mean? Camille with Hager Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. J.H. For Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. Eliza Sandberger.
another gemstone. An old scale. Strange, it seems to be built into the wall. I'm done with that. It's locked. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. Yes? I hope I'm not disturbing you. You are, but I'm quite used to disturbances. You see, I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Boulet, who died about a year after they were married. Where was he from? East Coast. Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. So he went west and became a miner? All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated and its location quite unknown. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. 
My knack for research is... well, it's a gift. I'll touch bases with you later. That would be nice. What have you got? Talk to you later. You better. Another gemstone. What do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Laurie Gerard has disappeared. So? Did you know she was going to disappear? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Mr. Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But... Now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. A square and a duck. Now, where have I seen those before? It looks like this thing opens up, but how? Looks like some sort of steam valve. This door goes outside. Opening it now would not be a good idea. Oh, that doesn't look good. Back already? Talk to you later. You better. Have I seen an eagle? More questions? I'll touch bases with you later. All right, then. Is this Jake and his wife? Yes. From what I've read, Camille loved to sing and dance, even in death, apparently. Jake reportedly told people that after she died, he would sometimes see strange glowing lights outside the windows at night, bobbing gracefully alongside the train as if dancing with it. He said he found the sight very comforting. I suspect normal people would have found it terrifying. Better not mess with that puppy.
What's up? I'll let you get back to work. Pleasure talking to you. Oops. What's in here? If I had some music, I could play a tune. What's up? Thanks for the chat. Take care. Please don't. What's going on? Thanks for your help. Not a problem. Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? How about a hint? You bet. There's an old sampler in Camille's car that has a train on it and this weird scale in Jake's car, but I have no idea what to do with them. Any suggestions? To use a scale, you have to weigh something. And if it's a small scale, what you weigh will be small. Like little coins, maybe? As for on which side of the scale those little coins go, there's something hanging on the wall in Camille's car that might help you. A stitch in time saves nine, you know. Nine what? I have no idea. Okay, thanks a bunch. You're welcome a bunch. Goodbye.
Looks like I need a special tool. I need something that will turn the bolts. Wonder what Jake used this for. Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? How about a hint? You bet. I got this weird slug that looks like a little coin from Tino. But now what? Look around in Camille's car. My guess is you'll find another slug that looks just like it, only, you know, different. I'm not even going to weigh in on that one. Excellent. You guys are great. We know. See ya. The little book of samplers. Surely there is no greater joy for the 19th century woman young or old than to bring the piece of linen to life with a needle thread, requiring only needle thread pure imagination. The word sampler comes from the Latin word exemption, which means example. That which serves in the model, the best samplers not only allow their creators to recall the particular embroidery stitches, look like the knights, execute properly, but also demonstrate to the world their mastery of an important womanly skill. Indeed, many of the gentlemen heed head has been turned, and many of a marriage fortified by a wall-crafted sampler. It is acceptable in these modern times for samplers to take many forms. One classic is the long, narrow band sampler, which features bands of flowery border and design as well as rows and numbers and the alphabet. Another classic is the spot sampler, a delightful display of randomly placed images of morphs. Most motifs are naturalistic objects that have specific meanings in the language of samplers. Here's a list of common motifs and their meanings. Duck, myrtle, eagle, America, harp, 
this purity, square of nature, moral, dialogue of nature, stars, bravery, crown is eternal, owl's wisdom, dog is faithfulness, dove is charity, cherry is departed, wisdom departed, okay. Nowadays, most samplers are colorful with variations on the two classic styles and are largely decorative in nature, houses, schools, and churches, take center stage in some, and others, mottos, verses, and important dates are featured. There is an alarming trend among some samplers' makers to use only one stitch, a sample, and another plain cross stitch. It behooves these women to remember that nothing catches the eye like variety, nor holds the heart like a multi-talented seamstress. That square and that duck look very familiar. If those are candle holders, they are very strange. Wonder what's supposed to go here. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? you'd be the one to find me. No offense, uh, Nadine? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. So it was just all for show? Well, not entirely. 
See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, Dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me. See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. What about the other people you invited on this trip? If you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. Yep. Bye. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. Finish that. Finish that. Check. Go to the piano and see what happens. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for more. Watch so well. Something tells me Jake is better than I am for a reason. Read the letter that Mark gave you of Jake Hardy wrote to his niece. Figure out why it's square and dark.
you can have all those symbols on the stove in order to achieve those symbols by the same for everything else or with something to do with the scale and Jake's car maybe. That's first things first is ready to let it. The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth, and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands, but with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death, I promise that you'll be able to find it. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, and Tombstone. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart, I have stored his name accordingly. But to retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order. This will require looking inside Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker and wearing the shoes as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you. Words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination, will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her and heard her and feel her presence on the train even today, 20 years after her untimely death. So above all else, my dear niece, let nothing happen to my train. It holds wonderful things. Kindest regards, Jake Hurley. Check. Can use this to open that grate I saw in Camille's car. I wonder if this has something to do with that list of cities Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth.
Guess I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters.